Hold up. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and second time's the charm, I guess. We're going to talk about top five of the week, but I recorded this video once, and I had some weird uh, humming noise in the background, so I'm hoping everything goes good with this recording, but yes. Top five of the week, I have a couple honorable mentions, and a couple that are really bad, one specifically, we're going to talk about it. But if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit like, subscribe, let me know your top down below, and let's start right off with those honorable mentions. This was really hard. Like, I am not kidding, there were so many good indie books this week, all of my DC books just kept getting bumped and bumped. And I didn't even have anything make it from Marvel and what, Reckoning More and Woman Without Fear and Sabretooth were all really good. They just didn't make it. I almost thought about making it a top 10 this week and I'm like, nah, way too much. Just way too much work. <laughs> so let's talk about honorable mentions here. I have two. First off, I have Arkham Order of the World by Dan Waters and art by Danny. Now, this book is and has been consistently very good. It's telling a story of the inmates that escaped on A-Day, and they are basically coming together at this point and making their own Arkham. And it's a very good story. The art fits very well, and I love the psychologists that we meet within the first issues, and I did review that long ago. Joy Jacosta is a phenomenal person because she's trying to help these people she has their best best you know thoughts in hand but is she not really going about it the right way or maybe she is i don't know it's a very nuanced book and i really enjoy it so my second honorable mention quickly i have justice league incarnate and i have been enjoying this it's by joshua williamson it has been consistently decent and i wouldn't say good but it's been decent this time, I wanted to include it because there was a lot of stuff that will lead up to the death of the Justice League. So it's definitely a must read as far as continuity goes. And there's a lot of like retconning of stuff that just happened in Death Metal with Perpetua, but now actually the Gentry was behind it. And it's, it's going to be a lot to digest. <laughs> I, I think we'll see deep dives into that before the death of the Justice League. So let's actually get into my top five. So the top five best comic books of the week. For number five, I have Detective Comics 1051. This is by Mariko Tamaki. And the art this time is by Max Rayner. Great artist, great writer. This story is leading into something that I think is really good about addiction and manipulation. I love Psycho Pirate, one of the more underutilized characters that has really strong potential. And I'm hoping we see that. But right now we see him going insane a little bit, right? He is controlling everybody at the new tower. And he's having to do so with lots of Red Bull and what I'm assuming is a lot of amphetamines. So we may see a psychotic break here at some point. And I'm hoping that's where we're heading. But I did love this issue. Number four, I have Batman number 120. And I was really, really wasn't sure which one to put first and which way. You know what? Jorge Molina's art in this. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's why it made a bit before Detective Comics. But the story by Joshua Williamson is also phenomenal. Jorge Molina, though, brings it with his abyss, makes it very haunting, like beautifully haunting. And I love the way that we see Abyss now manipulating Batman Incorporated. And very quite possibly, we could be heading into Lex and Batman teaming up together to take down not only Abyss, but Batman Inc., even though they are under what seems to be some sort of control of Abyss. And I'm really enjoying where this is going. So phenomenal, phenomenal book. But that's it for DC. The Indies won by far this week. Oh my God, so many good books. So, number three, Knock Tara number seven by Scott Snyder and Tony Daniels. I love this universe. I love this world. I love what they do with, with Bailey, which was sort of a side character last time. And now we're seeing her front and center. And one thing that I've always talked about is Math makes sense to me. I'm good with, you know, numbers. I'm good with math as a universal language. And I really like that they gave 
that personality trait to Bailey, I thought it was a very smart move. And it really cements her position in this team. We do meet a few new characters and even lose a few new characters. But by the end, we're seeing Val and the crew really going to the worst place possible. So I am curious what we're going to see. I love this universe. Number two. Oh, my God. This is really hard to pick these last three. Crossover number 11 by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. Crossover is the whole series is a love letter to comic book fans, whether it's actually seeing Donny Cates in the issue, not a self-insert, literally a self-insert, I guess you could say. And we're seeing him kind of write this story. And then we get his characters from the Paybacks, who are front and center here, really bringing this to the number two spot because, holy crap, Again, I got to talk about this. I, I'll put a spoiler warning in the beginning, but we see Negan. Oh, my God, we see Negan. Negan comes in from the whack. We've seen different characters come in, you know, like from Kick-Ass or we've seen Savage Dragon. But we've got Negan really like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that's so fucking cool. I have no idea where this is going, but I'm loving every minute of it, which takes us to our number one pick. Oh my goodness, I, another universe I absolutely love, Geiger, Lady Bates Giant by Jeff Johns and Friends, and of course the art is by Brian Hitch and Friends, but we get a couple of different stories here, we're introduced to a couple of new characters, we get Redcoat, who is going to, from my understanding, have an ongoing coming up eventually, I was hoping we'd get a little bit more of Junkyard Joe, because I know that is also coming up, but we didn't get much from that. But we do learn about the people that are in and around Las Vegas. And we learn about the way people are treated in Las Vegas. And we we get this. Uh, there was one story that I didn't. I, I was kind of getting bored with reading. Right. And I think it was by Sterling Gates. I want to say. Um, and it's about a man taking care of his father and basically taking the treasure and replanting it so he can leave, relive that glory because he's suffering from some sort of dementia. And I thought it was so sweet because the son was like, through the whole thing, he kept calling him soft. He kept calling him soft. And he's like, yeah, by the end, he's like, yeah, I'm soft. Yeah, I, I, I accept that. We also meet a few ladies. We get an astronaut lady who um, bombs an entire place. We get um, uh, the flapper lady. I can't remember her name right offhand. Who really thrives on loyalty. And then we have a lady that gets her, tries to get her freedom. She's basically a slave, a sex slave, a she belongs to this man. And come to find out that the one, the man that actually kills her was her son. And it was heartbreaking. Oh, I love this book. Jeff Johns is the master of world building in this entire thing. And then Tara Geiger who have loved all along, the glowing man, we actually get a tease for him that's coming up because somebody is in love with the glowing man. So I'm curious to see if they have another Geiger book or what's going on with this universe, but I want more. I want more. I want more. This has so much potential with all of these different characters. And honestly, I am curious to see if this becomes something bigger. It's on the Mad Ghost line, right? Um. Maybe we could see a bunch of spinoffs and have it be something bigger like Valiant was, right? So I'm curious. I love this book. Absolutely love it. But we still got the worst of the week, right? Uh, of course, I got to put it in here because I'm not I'm not reading it. But I, I, I was able to um, watch a review. I dropped it at number one, and that's One Star Squadron. I just, I can't. With this, Mark Russell, to me, has been mostly Miss. I love um, his Robots book. I've, I've recommended that plenty of times. Or not all Robots. But this book is a very much a Miss for me. But my actual worst, because I read it, and I don't want to necessarily say One Star Squadron because I didn't read all of it, right, um, was New Masters. Now, I was hoping to like this book. I really like the art style. It feels fresh and new. It's something different. But the story wasn't there for me. If you take a look at comic books, there are a lot of post-apocalyptic worlds, right? And you have to get it done correctly. 
in order for it to hit, because there is so many. Just in my top five alone, I have two, right? This one didn't hit because there was very little explanation as to what was going on, even with the cold opening. There was very little explanation. There's potential here, but I, I, I'm i not going to continue with this series. It's, it's unfortunate because there's definitely some potential, but very little explicit. Uh, oh, my God. Very little explanation as to what's going on in this world and why this world is this way. And the dialogue was lacking. Eh, it's not very good. Definitely not a recommend. So, of course, let me know. What are you guys' top picks down below? And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.